Welcome to Psychology of Daf. We are in Gemara, Beitza, Daf, Yud. And today we're going to talk about the psychology and uh, philosophy of what it means to be alive. The Gemara on Amad Beis discusses assumptions to make about states of various items. For example, if one sets aside $100 in tithe money, in Miser, but we're talking about real Miser, that you'd have to uh, have a Kedusha to it, uh, and then you came back and you found $200. Now, shall you assume that this is a totally new $200 and it's not sacred? Or shall you assume that the $100 is still from the tithe and then an additional $100 was added? And a similar question came up regarding live animals, such as one it was uh, Mechen, one designated three doves for slaughter and use on Yom Tev, and they need to be Muchan, and then he came back and found only two. Now, can you assume that those two are from the designated livestock, so that it is permitted to use on Yom Tev? Or must he assume that uh, those two are uh, completely new doves, and the original three somehow hopped away? Now, the Gemara considers that since live animals are more active, they cannot be compared to the case of the money. Even uh, one who assumes that the leftover $100 is from the miser, he may not necessarily assume that the two doves found now are from the original three. Original three. And it's the nature of living things to be in constant motion and to be unpredictable. And that's the reason. Now, the Chobos al in Shar Bechina, Perak Aleph, makes an interesting observation. And he says as follows, When one and the same thing is always being produced in the same way, it is clear that the maker is not a voluntary agent, but a force acting according to the nature imposed upon it, compelling it to act in a definite way which it has no power to alter, just like fire, whose sole function is to burn, or water, whose nature is to cool. But one who has the power to do as his will prompts him will act in various ways at various times. In other words, the more alive something is, the more unpredictable it is. Stones just sit as stones. It's not a particularly hard job to be a stone. Fire and water are less predictable because they are more animated, but still they follow basic physical laws. Animals are even less predictable because they are far more animated than fire and water. However, since they largely follow instinct, much of their behavior can be predicted. Ultimately, humans, who represent the highest degree of life and intellect and animation, are utterly unpredictable. Now, the point of all this is that often we want to have our cake and eat it too. We want to live and be alive fully, and yet we loathe change and unpredictability. This is even more so regarding the people that we love. I want them to be alive and excited and interested in me, yet we secretly wish that we could control them and press the off button whenever they become too difficult or push the remote control and make them do what we want. But that is not what being alive really entails. In actuality, there's no way to be alive without embracing a certainty. Because of this continuum we described, it is simply a fact of nature that the more unpredictable something is, the more alive it is. Now, of course, unpredictability does not mean chaos. Chaos is often random and destructive. Uh, unpredictability, on the other hand, is not random at all. It just is something that is responding to inner directives that we may not be able to predict or even recreate. Respecting ourselves and others and what it means to be alive means realizing that a person is capable of deciding and doing anything. It doesn't mean that they should. It means they're alive and that we enjoy their life force knowing for and allowing for what they could do.